speaking of destiny. Yes, I mean the radical future, but I'm not talking about um, odd things like the cardboard houses or cardboard furniture. I'm really talking about the environment, and we have already heard about it, and you'll hear a lot more about it over the next two or three days. And remember, the future is not about science, it's about, what is the most important word? Emotion. I don't care what you think about the science. I happen to think the science is, is more or less proven that this is a very serious issue that we should respond to. But even if I'm wrong, even if we are all wrong, the future will be driven by an emotional reaction to this graph, and it's growing. And you can expect at least a 10 or 20 times the passion attached to global warming issues in the media, in, your, in the homes of your, in your own homes, in your children, in your grandchildren, in your cousins, your nephews and nieces, in your neighbours, in politicians. You will see this passion grow. Three years ago, you could hardly find a head of state of any nation that was talking each week about climate change. But today, you can hardly find a head of state that isn't talking about climate change on a regular basis. Every one of the new uh, presidential candidates for the United States election are, are talking about new policies for America on climate change. Even America is coming into line on this issue. And as our anxiety is growing, about our ability to destroy the planet, maybe, and destroy our future, we are also becoming more anxious about every other part of the environment. And so we see a change from plastic packaging to paper packaging. Good news for you. We see a change from plastic bottles to paper bottles. Good news for you. And I have to say, marvellous, actually, for storage too, because paper is so much more efficient on the shelf. When you think of how much wasted space there is in a, in a, in a crate of round bottles, when you've got a tetra pack carton like this, a paper brick, uh, then uh, you're getting a, a massive increase in density of product per metre, which is great news. Uh, the difficulty, of course, is recycling some of this stuff because you have plastics, a little bit of plastic in there, you have a little bit of aluminium foil, and you have a lot of cardboard, so it does need a special facility, but it can be done. And you see just about every area of the packaging industry is trying to reshape its products to save an extra millimetre here and there. And many of my clients are doing these things. You know this is happening, but paper, 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 cardboard, cardboard, cardboard is coming back. Um, and uh, y you just have to look at what's happening with paper bags. Uh, in my country, it will soon be illegal, I think, to give away a plastic bag to a shopper uh, without charging them for it. In India, in Delhi, they banned plastic bags some time ago because they regard them as a national nuisance. Good news for paper. So, uh, yes, you're seeing all kinds of thoughts about forests as well and the, the, the tree huggers and so on. But forests are turning out to be the world's greatest friend. And as we are starting to focus on less weight paper products, more eco-friendly paper, and even 100% recycled papers that are as good quality as the rest, and I'm sure we will get there, even as we focus about new ways to reduce energy, to radically improve our paper pulp processes, um, even with all of that, I think we will find this, that the wood industry itself moves more and more from being a supplier of paper to a deliverer of power. And that, I think, will turn out to be the wood industry's greatest future potential. Because if we do get much more efficient at recycling, if we do get ourselves uh, to a place where we can produce some of the best papers in the world using almost 100% recycled product, then we will need, and the same with cardboard, by the way, then we will need less and less of your forests every year in order to regenerate that pool. Um, and that will release a huge potential, as I say, for um, power. Um, and, uh, so, and that raises a, a final issue, which is offsetting. Already, we are seeing papers that are fully offset. What do I mean by that? What I mean is this. Paper manufacturers are working out their total energy consumption 
And then they are going and buying a credit on the energy market. And they're saying, okay, we will pay some, uh, for, for some scheme in, uh, uh, I don't know, let's say, actually I'll give you a good example. Uh, we will pay for um, a wood chip furnace in, uh, uh, in, in the, the northern part of Sweden, which is burning, uh, in a school that was burning oil. It used to burn oil. And they can't afford a new boiler to burn wood chips, but we have hundreds of tons of free wood chips here in the, in the timber uh, yard here, and we, they can have them for very little. And we will put in, as a paper company, we will put in a new wood chip boiler into that school. Um, and they're going to contribute 60% of the cost, and we'll contribute 40%. And that makes it uh, commercially viable for them. And they will pay a certain amount for the wood chip, and uh, the wood chip will go. As a result of this, in this school we know that we will save, let's say, 100 tons of carbon every year. That carbon that has been saved is a direct result of our gift of 40% subsidy to pay for that boiler. And that gives us, as a company, 100 tons of carbon as a credit, which we can use to balance 100 tons of carbon that we used to make paper this year. That is a genuine offset. You control it yourself, it's provable, it wouldn't have happened anyway, the school would never have converted without your help, um, and you can use it to balance these things. Um, and so in conclusion, uh, we'll see a lot more of that kind of thing. Why? Because the slogan of future well, for paper and, 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 uh, and carbon will be that we make life easy, but we do it in a great way. We do it for you, and a way that's convenient for you. We do it in ways that uh, assist you and your family and those that you care for, we do it in a way which, which, which is good for our community, our local community, and it's good for our earth, for the future of the earth. Everything we do, we do carefully. We reduce our toxic wastes. We've reduced our energy consumption. We produce wonderful products with almost 100% recycling. Uh, we are extraordinarily uh, conscious of environment and sustainable forestry and all of that. Uh, we make sure that in every possible way we minimize the distances that we send product around the world. Uh, we do these things because we believe in a future which is a sustainable one, it's a protected one, and one that we're worth living in. And that is why I believe that pulp and paper have this tremendous future, even though the competitive pressures here in Europe with some issues of, uh, of overproduction and so on, uh, will continue to be there, even though the pressure will continue to be on for innovation, for creativity, for cutting cost, for being incredibly energetic in our marketing and sales, for developing new products, for ever uh, higher quality papers using less, less, less resources. Yes, even with all of those things, I do believe that cardboard and paper are here to stay. They will drive part of our sustainable future, and worldwide, this is a very, very important industry. Thank you very much. Thank you.